hey, sorry I haven't been so attentive. Or I have been attentive, but to other things other than the video camera and the people on YouTube. You. I don't know, man. I think, I think I'm phasing. I think my time on YouTube talking to people was really awesome. I was able to develop a lot of friends, meet a lot of people. People that, like, come over to my house, call me. People that I call. Jay, thanks for having me over for Thanksgiving a couple of years ago. <laughs> it's like, it's so real, you know. But, it's, it's detracting from my ability to elevate to the next echelon. I've got to kind of keep my mouth shut. <sighs> I look pretty. It's kind of gross, but it's like the, the balance of taking off. You know, in order to lift off into orbit, you need to burn a lot of fuel. You need to explode a bunch of shit. It's really dirty and harmful, but then you get elevation and you're in orbit. Um, and I'm... I'm going to this place now where... I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what i got to do. Because I, like I, can, I can have this conversation right here with anybody. I'm just choosing to do it right now in video because it's been two weeks since I made a video. I actually made a video last night for the Cross Mac channel. It's just music. It's not, it's not like not talking or anything. Thoughts. Um... So I think what I gotta do is take it easy, keep playing music, keep learning, developing my chord structure progression, structural progression, and my rhythm, and expand on, envelop some new uh, rhythms because this I got like one rhythm that's really good that I like, but there's a few others that I want to do. You know, like down, down, up, down, things like that, as opposed to down, down, up, down, down, up, down, or whatever it is. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to do. It's just a matter of stepping away and working. Um, I made a video earlier, but it, there's no sound. So I feel it was like, very heartfelt. But I want to thank you. Uh, so many people flashed in front of me, Gail and... Michelle and Thomas, I mean, everybody, so many people over the last couple of years, so many people that I've met, and even people that I haven't met but that have typed, it's not that I don't dislike you, it's just, you know, I'm learning in a different way from you if you're typing than I am if you're talking, but you people have offered me some holy objective advice, holy with a W, W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy objective advice. And it's, of course, subjective advice individually. You offer me your subjective opinion, but then you, the other person, offer me your subjective opinion. So I have all this, all this subjection, all these, all these people talking about the subject, and it creates this objective that I'm not able to get, really, in my daily life. It's just, it's, the Internet, is, it's such a great tool for figuring out objectively about what I am and what I'm doing. So if I bear myself, people will tell me, and I get a little bit of everything. And sometimes I'll get like heavy on this side. I'll get like 30% fuck you, and 20% I like this, and 50% who is this guy? Is he stoned? And then I'm like, oh, okay, so that was a problem. The weed, and then and then sometimes it'll be 70%. This is so great, or 90%. So good. Sometimes it'll be like 40%. Fuck you. So, and I kind of gauge the comments and the feel and the amount of people that watch it. And a lot of times people watch if I don't have a shirt on or if it's a short video, um, catchy title, things like that. So really it's like the percentages of the people that have watched it, how they act. So what they say, like, I've garnered so much about how I am. When I'm stoned, uh, most people don't like it. I get like 30% of the people really get into it. Those are probably people that are also stoned or get stoned pretty frequently. And the other 70% of the people, maybe they get stoned sometimes. And sometimes some people maybe they get stoned a little bit, but they'll be like, dude, you were stoned. You were baked. Take it easy. Some people will be like, I don't understand anything you're saying because they've never smoked weed. And so I figured out when I smoke weed, it's not necessarily a good thing. I've got to maintain normality. 
that's something I learned through YouTube, which has been beautiful. It's been wonderful that I'm, I'm allowed to put it on the internet and talk about it publicly. You know, even though it's, it's illegal federally, like, we're still allowed to talk about it because that's the whole point of our society. The Founding Fathers of the United States built a constitution that you can change the law as it goes. And hemp wasn't illegal when they wrote the Constitution. Then later, Hearst wanted a uh, monopoly on the paper, so they illegalized hemp, and then it got this stigma attached to it with the mass media in the late 1800s. And like, it's just great to be able to talk about it all openly because it's not a bad thing. Alcohol is not a bad thing. Sex is not a bad thing. Weed is not a bad thing. It's just you got to be careful with that stuff, and it's well worth talking about. I've talked about it myself in circles and circles and now I'm ready to play. I figured out how to how to kick on the rhythm. And when there's other people around, I blend in and I start moving with the rhythm. Even though I'm internalizing rhythm and I'm not actually moving really and I'm feeling like the beat in my mind, kind of like in my deep, my deepest innards, I feel like a, a rhythm, I start to blend in. And it's different than affecting the situation, focusing its calm, and then blanking my mind. That's powerful too, because I can say, I can focus its calm and then blank my mind and it becomes calm. Or it's working and blank my mind and it begins working. And then there's the rhythm, which is just a, bl a blending in effect. And if I'm on stage and I start doing rhythm, people are watching me, but then, and, and I start to blend in, and they f are forgetting it's me, and then they start to feel like, they, they start to move with it. It's very effective. But then when people say dancing is evil, that's why. It's because it's just powerfully evocative. It's, you know, everyone's got the heartbeat, which I think, so everyone's tuned into it. But, but the power of rhythm is that no matter what situation, if you start moving with rhythm, everyone around will feel more comfortable will feel like you're not there, and so they're a little more comfortable. It's like one less person to worry about. Um, and for a while, I thought I was blending in with my thoughts. Like, I would be speaking in my mind, it's calm, I'm invisible right now, it's, it's calm, it's calm, and I'd be saying that, repeating it, but all that mental motion was causing disruption. I figured, I learned how to blank my mind, and, and it, a lot of what helps me to blank my mind is rhythm and stretching and things. But I can kind of just... You know, like I just blanked it just there. I just, I just ceased thought action. There was no, no it was just, I, I was like, it was as if time had stopped. So if, if I set something in path, like I say, this is, this is hot, and then blank my mind, everyone around starts to feel that heat. This is cool. Blank my mind, and it starts to feel cool. Clearing the mind. Um, I wanted to share with you that about the difference between clearing the mind and going into rhythm mode because they're very different. Like if I'm watching someone on stage and I'm moving with the rhythm, they'll be comfortable, but then the show will be over and they'll go on and not and another and never interact. But if I'm if they're on stage and I'm watching them and I'm communicating with them in my mind, I'm empathing, I'm feeling and speaking, just thought, they turn and look at me. And then if I blank my mind, they have some sort of internal process while they're looking at me and projecting it onto me. And then if I communicate with them again in the mind, they're even more drawn to it. And I can bring people in with that. The rhythm kind of blends me away so that they don't come in. They just are, like, comfortable. But the speaking gets people involved, so... They're both very useful tools. I'll use them both in, in a lot of in lots of things that I do. Diplomacy, uh, speaking in the mind with diplomacy, and then blanking the mind to allow the person to create their idea. Because you got to trust people. I can't go into a diplomatic situation and dominate it with my thoughts. I can, because that's the force. I can go and. but I don't always want to do it because I would prefer to
Yeah. I might edit it right before you walked by. But I might just stop it now.